China has been the world's factory for the last three decades, but as geopolitical tensions increase, Western media is predicting more countries will decouple from China and eventually turn to countries like India for overseas manufacturing. But can India replicate in the next 30 years what China has done in the past 30 years? While India certainly has potential, the real answer is most likely no. As you'll see in today's video, China holds a strategic advantage over India, and every other country for that matter, in their ability to manufacture almost any type of product you can imagine. In today's video, I'm going to share with you 10 reasons why India won't overtake China as the world's factory and help you better understand why Chinese manufacturing will continue to be a staple for the future of our world. Reason number one, the size of China's manufacturing industry. Let's start with the one fact that shows how difficult it would be to move any meaningful amount of manufacturing from China to India. China's manufacturing is currently 10 times larger than India's. At the end of 2022, China manufacturing accounted to $5 trillion, while India's manufacturing amounted to only $450 billion. What this means is that if we move just 10% of China's manufacturing capacity, it will double India's capacity. How easy would it be for India to double its manufacturing? Well, let's look at the data from the World Bank to see the last time India accomplished this. In 2009, India's manufacturing was $230 billion, and it took the Indian government 13 years to double the capacity to its current rate. So even if India's manufacturing grows twice as fast as before, it would take about six to seven years for India to steal 10% of China's manufacturing. This most certainly won't worry China at all. Reason number two, India has neglected manufacturing. Here is the fact. India has focused too much on software and IT services over the last three decades and has neglected manufacturing. Right now, India's share of global manufacturing is less than 3%, while China's share is more than 30%. Look at this fascinating chart which shows how both China and India have grown their manufacturing outputs. Notice how China's share of global manufacturing was only 8.7% in 2004, but surpassed 30% in 2022. Meanwhile, India's manufacturing has largely remained stagnant over the past 20 years with little growth. The manufacturing dominance of China is very clear. Even at home, Indian manufacturers have fallen behind over the years. Here are some examples. In smartphones, at least 90% of the Indian market is captured by foreign brands, vast majority being Chinese brands, such as Xiaomi, Vivo, Realme, and Oppo. Indian brands are really only found in the sub $100 market. In household appliances like washing machines, once again, foreign brands have more than 80% of Indian market share. And in cars, foreign brands and joint ventures have a 75% share of the market. Half of all cars in India are actually Japanese. Reason number three, China dominates traditional manufacturing. While Western media continues to flash headlines that China is going to collapse and the future of China is in jeopardy, one thing we must remember is the dominant lead China maintains in traditional manufacturing. For example, if we examine current steel and cement production, two industries that are vital for future economic growth, China dominates the world's steel market, manufacturing 10 times more than India, who is the world's second largest producer. In addition, China holds a similar lead in cement production, producing eight times as much as India, who once again is the world's second largest producer. Reason number four, China's share of global exports. Whenever China's success in manufacturing is brought up, the first thing many people say is, oh, it's because of cheap labor. However, wages in China have increased significantly the past two decades, and yet China continues to dominate numerous sectors. Earlier this year, China became the world's number one automobile exporter and dominates many industries that will be vital to the future of our world, including electric vehicles, electric batteries, solar panels, renewable energy, and artificial intelligence. However, even in low-tech products, China continues to dominate. 35% of clothes are made in China. Over 50% of furniture and toys are manufactured in China. And the footwear and travel industries are reliant on China, with over 65 and 70% of production coming from China in each respective industry. Reason number five, the Chinese ecosystem. China will continue to dominate the future of manufacturing for one simple reason. The incredible ecosystem it has built. China doesn't just manufacture products at a cheaper price point. China controls the entire supply chain and manages every step of the entire process. Let's break it down with an example from the textile industry. Earlier this summer, I traveled to China and personally visited a textile factory called Kalito. Sure, Chinese factories can produce world-class shirts like this one I'm wearing from Rhone, but the textile industry starts 
with agriculture, specifically with growing and harvesting cotton, and China is the world's largest producer. Notice that India is number two and quite close to China in total production. However, when we study this chart for cotton yield, we can see that China has a competitive advantage and does more with less as China uses one fourth as much land as India. But how did China achieve that? By investing in the best technologies. Western media will tell you that China uses slave labor to harvest cotton from the Xinjiang region. But the reality? is that cotton farmers in China have bought the most advanced cotton harvesting tractors from American company John Deere. The Xinjiang region of China produces over 20% of the world's cotton, and it plays a crucial role in the supply chain of China's textile industry. China also has additional factories that supply the dyes, buttons, zippers, and all types of fabric needed to produce any type of textile in the world. Such mastery of the supply chain is the secret behind China's success. In fact, if we look at this graph detailing manufacturing wages in China, we can clearly see wages have grown astronomically over the last two decades, a whopping sevenfold increase since 2004. But during the same time period, China's share of global manufacturing has also increased. Since 2004, China has steadily increased its manufacturing, first surpassing Japan in 2007 and then the US and Europe a few years later. China's lead is now almost impossible for anyone else to overtake them. Of course, wages cannot rise forever without affecting manufacturing. Many Chinese factories are now voluntarily offshoring some labor-intensive jobs to Vietnam, Mexico, Thailand, to also take advantage of lower wages. Also, as China gets wealthier, many young people no longer wish to work in factories. But now let's shift our focus to India. In general, one can say that India is 10 to 15 years behind China in manufacturing. While there are a lot of efforts to boost manufacturing, they have not been successful when compared to China's growth. When Prime Minister Modi got elected the first time in 2014, there was a big campaign called made in India. However, if we study this chart that examines India's GDP components, we can see the blue line of manufacturing has remained stagnant with little to almost no growth in the past 30 years. Reason number six, India needs Chinese materials to manufacture. This is probably the most fascinating insight in this entire video. The problem in India right now is that manufacturing is often restricted to low-end assembly. Apple's operation in India is a great example of what's happening. On the surface, iPhone manufacturing in India has risen significantly over the last two years. But there's a catch. Most operations for Apple in India are known as FATP, Final Assembly, Test and Pack, a labor-intensive process performed with components that are flown in directly from China. Thus, the value add in India's manufacturing is actually very small. Moreover, the Indian government is providing huge subsidies to the foreign corporations and is losing money in the process. The assembly cost for a company like Foxconn is 4% of the price of a smartphone, while the Indian government subsidy is 6%. This is a huge corporate welfare system that's not sustainable or scalable in the long term. India's dependence on China is also immense in the pharmaceutical sector, a vital sector in India's economy. 75% of the raw materials needed to make pharmaceutical drugs are imported directly from China. And a final example is electric batteries. Indian firm Tata makes electric cars, but relies on batteries and crucial EV components, once again, directly from China. Thus, it's no wonder that India's trade deficit with China was nearly $100 billion last year and keeps rising. India's imports from China have nearly tripled over the last decade. Reason number seven, India's infrastructure problems. The number one problem with India is the lack of essential infrastructure. India severely lags behind China and even other developing Asian countries like Vietnam and Thailand in basic things such as electricity, roads, highways, railways, and seaports. India and China's population is nearly identical, but China is able to produce four times the amount of electricity as India. Without plentiful, cheap, and consistent electricity, how can factories in India operate? Even in Bangalore, the Silicon Valley of India, there are numerous power outages every day. And then there are problems related to transportation, which affects the entire supply chain and logistics and manufacturing. Indian roads are quite bad within cities, and there are only 4,000 kilometers of proper expressways. Compare that to the over 170,000 kilometers of expressways 
in China. In addition, freight trains in China travel at an average speed of only 25 kilometers an hour. Tremendous amounts of productivity is lost in India simply because of bad transportation. Reason number eight, India's bureaucracy. Charlie Munger once famously said, it's very hard to get anything done in India. He was specifically focused on the democratic chaos as people can protest and stop the progress of any important project, but there is more insane bureaucracy. Take, for example, something as simple as getting a Stripe payment account. In the United States, the whole process will take about 15 minutes. All you need is your social security number and your bank account details. However, in India, the process can take up to four months as the Indian government requires an endless number of meetings and paperwork to complete the process. India's tax system is even more complex, and it's no wonder why these inefficiencies have led to thousands of foreign companies quitting India over the last decade. Reason number nine, India's labor issues. While India has a huge reservoir of young people, there are numerous problems with the labor force. First, the labor force participation rate among women is only 25%, thus depriving the economy of a vast number of workers. Second, the education is quite bad in rural areas, where over 900 million Indians live. Thus, a staggering 29% of the workforce only has the equivalent of a ninth grade education. UNICEF estimates that there will be over 300 million high school graduates by 2030, but only half of them will have employable skills. And the 10th and final reason is technology and R&D. India needs to invest a lot of money on science, research, and manufacturing specific technologies. But right now, all the startups in India are focusing on software and services. When it comes to patents, India actually ranks quite low, and it's no surprise that China leads the world. India also needs to attract FDI from foreign companies like China once did. Rather than providing corporate welfare to foreign companies, the goal should be to make the market attractive so that foreign companies would eagerly set up factories in India. But considering the problems that we've outlined in today's video, it's highly unlikely that they will do so. Manufacturing is also undergoing a radical transformation and we have officially entered the fourth industrial revolution, which is powered by robots, artificial intelligence, and 5 and 6G. Considering that China buys almost half of all industrial robots in the world, it once again is building a substantial lead over India and all other countries in the ability to manufacture at scale in the most efficient way possible. In conclusion, India is not going to threaten China's dominance in manufacturing anytime in the near future. And by the way, this holds true for other countries like Mexico and Vietnam. Notice that when talking about China, Western leaders have now switched their language from decoupling to de-risking, which is a term for targeted decoupling, which basically means that only specific areas like artificial intelligence and high-end semiconductor chips. Just listen to this clip from Janice Yellen on why decoupling from China is harmful as well as impossible. It's also in many areas a win-win relationship in the sense that our trade and investment flows produce gains for China and gains for the United States. And much of it is un uncontroversial, should thrive, and um, it would really be disastrous to try to decouple from China. Of course, labor-intensive and low-end manufacturing will gradually move away from China to other developing nations. By the way, these are not bad trends for either party. It will be a win-win as China moves up the value chain in countries like India create new jobs and improve their economies. This is actually very similar to how Japanese and South Korean companies moved to China in the 1990s and 2000s. And if relations between China and India improve, China can even proactively help accelerate India's manufacturing. That will be good for India, China, Asia, and the entire world. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation about China and India and the reason why China will continue to be the world's factory for the foreseeable future. I want to give a huge thank you to S.L. Canthan for his help in writing today's video script. Make sure that you give him a follow on Twitter. Also, a huge thank you to Roan for sponsoring my wardrobe. And if you're interested in the best menswear, use my discount code to save an incredible 20% off your entire order. I'll drop the link down in the description below. Everyone, thank you for your continued support and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.